Good day everybody, today we are going to be doing this question. Now before I could start off with this question, I would like to mention you all that the solution to this question is already available. So let me show you the solution in, in an alternate manner. So this is a different way to get the solution. So foremost what I wish to do is I would like to draw the figure. So you got a circle. So this is the circle that we would be utilizing. Okay. Now this circle has got two tangents drawn from an external point. So if I were to take this point to be an external point A from this external point I would have to draw two tangents so let me draw that okay I'm going to name this point as M and this point as N. So this is the point of contact, this is the point of contact. Fine. Now there is another important line that is actually hitting the circle. So it is actually a tangent and let us name this line as B C. So there is a point of contact here and you are actually uh, have a tangent over here at M, tangent at N and tangent at this particular point say P. You can just name this point as P. Now from the question we have been given that BC is 7 units in length this is given the total length of BC is 7 units AB from point A to point B that is given to be as 8 units and AC is given to be as 9 units now you are expected to find the radius of the circle right so that is an interesting question so I hope you have understood the requirement for the question. These are the information that has been given to us and using this information we are expected to obtain the radius of the circle. Fair enough. So foremost what I wish to do is let me draw the radius. Let me draw the radius. So. I'm, I'm going to be drawing the radius from the point M to the point say let me name it as O so this is the radius now from the center to a point on the circle so clearly OM is the radius. Now by the tangent theorem, if the tangent as a perpendicular drop from the center in this fashion, then the angle made between the tangent and the perpendicular drop from the center will be 90 degrees. So that is from the, the tangent theorem which we have always been utilizing. So this is going to be 90 degrees. So similarly, if I were to drop a perpendicular to this side that would also be making an angle of 90 degrees so if I were to drop a perpendicular here this would be making an angle of 90 degree with the tangent okay so having got that straight let me mention that OM is equal to ON is equal to R and we need this R the radius is required okay now BC is going uh, is being given as 7 units and I'm going to be utilizing that information BC 
Now, what is BC? BC is the line segment. Is the line segment. So, when we talk about line segment, we would always talk about the distance between the points B and C. Now, let me mention the coordinates of the point B using polar coordinates. So, using polar coordinates, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the polar coordinates for B. So, you got A here and you got B here. So, I'm interested in BC. So, I will take the coordinates for B. Right? Now, remember the polar coordinate for B is given as x is equal to r times cos theta and y is equal to r times sin theta. r is the magnitude, theta is the angle. So, clearly the magnitude, this is given to be as 8 units for us. AC is given to be as 9 units for us. So, we want the coordinate for B. So, therefore, B is going to be 8 times cos theta comma 8 times sin theta. Similarly, we want the coordinates for C. Also, C is going to be... Now, if you were to draw a line, if you were to draw a line connecting A with O, C is on the other side. Okay? Now, since C is on the other side, the first coordinate for x will remain as x is equal to 9 times cos theta but the sine component will have a negative sign because of the direction. So, this is going to be negative 9 times sine theta. Now, I want that BC. So, therefore, if I have B to be as x1 and y1 and C to be as x2 comma y2, BC is going to be root of x2 negative x1 raised to the power of 2 positive y2 negative y1 raised to the power of 2. Right? That's a formula. So, this is going to be equal to what is my B? B is my x1 and this is y1 and x2 and y2. So, just substitute that. So, this is equal to I would be starting from 9 cos theta. So, 9 cos theta negative 8 times cos theta raised to the power of 2 positive y2 negative 9 sin theta negative 8 times sin theta raised to the power of 2. So, this is using the distance formula. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I can simply take cos theta out. So, this is going to be, if I were to take cos theta out, let me just stay right, write it in this fashion. Cos theta is taken out, of course, this is going to be 9, negative 8 times whole squared. So, this has got a degree to place that, followed by, I'm going to take sine theta out sine theta of negative 9, negative 8 there is a square there, place that, stretch this so this is equal to root of 9, negative 8 is 1 cos theta raised to the power of 2 would give you cos square theta 9, negative 9, negative 8 is 17 negative 17 so that's going to be negative 17 squared with sine squared so just place that 17 squared with sine squared. Now, what is BC? All these things is equal to BC. Right? But, BC is given to be what? 7 units. Substitute that. So, this would mean my 7 units is equal to square root of cos square theta positive 17 squared sine square theta. This is the square there. Now, what I wish to do is, I would like to square both sides. 
So when I do that, what happens? 7 squared is 49, square root and the square gets cancelled, giving me cos square theta plus 17 squared times sine squared. This is what I have got. Now I would like to make some slight changes. So what are slight changes? What is 17 squared? Place that value. So this is 49 is equal to cos squared theta plus 17 squared is 289, right? 289 sin squared theta. Now, I would like to write 289 sin squared theta in this following fashion. So this would mean 49 is equal to cos squared theta plus 289, I'm going to write it as 288 sin squared theta plus sin squared theta. And from here, I can add sin squared theta plus cos squared theta. Or we can say, sin, uh, you can, it doesn't matter, right? Cos squared theta, sin squared theta, sin squared theta, cos squared theta will always be giving us one. So this is going to be one. You push the one to the other side. So this would mean you got 49 negative 1 because the 1 is obtained from here is equal to 288 sin squared theta. So you got 48 is equal to 288 sin squared theta. Therefore, sin squared theta is equal to 48 divided by 288. Now, what happens when 48 is multiplied with 6? 6 eighths are 48, 4. 6 are 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. You get 288, right? So 48 divides this 6 times. That's fine. Now, from here, what does this give us? This gives us, this means, sine square theta is equal to 1 over 6. Fine. Let me keep it as 1 over 6 for sine square theta. But if we are just required to obtain sine square theta, then this value is fine. But we don't need only sine square theta. We need uh, cos square theta, cos theta. We need also tan theta. Now, I will just tell you in a minute why we need tan theta. Because tan theta would be the trigonometric ratio that would be connecting this opposite side. If I were to draw this line, let me draw this line and show it to you why I need tan theta. If I were to connect these two points, say I'm connecting these two points, and if I were to take this point to be theta, so this is the theta, opposite side is going to be my radius, right? So because of tan theta, I would be able to get my opposite side with adjacent side. So that's the reason we want tan theta. So I need that. So this would mean I need to extract sine theta. So sine theta is equal to 1 over root 6. But we need cos theta. Also, what is cos square theta? Cos square theta is 1 negative sine square theta. So cos square theta is 1 negative sine square theta. You can substitute 1 over 6. So and that would give me 5 over 6. This is cos square theta. So therefore, what is cos theta? So cos theta is equal to root of 5 divided by root of 6. So this is the value that we have got. Now from here I need tan theta. So therefore, what is tan theta? Tan theta is nothing but sine theta over cos theta. Sine theta is 1 over root 6. Cos theta is root 5 over root 6. So you flip it. 1 over root 6 multiplied with root 6 over root 5 will give you 1 over root 5. So therefore my tan theta is 1 over root 5. Simple trigonometric ratios. Okay, now having obtained the tan theta, let us go back to the figure. We need to perform some slight calculations. I need to get the value of Bm. Why? Well, from, tan, uh, from the figure, say I got a 90 degree here. So let me consider triangle AMO. Right? Now tan theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. So what is the adjacent side? Adjacent side is going to be AM. But I've got only AB. I don't have AM. Now how am I going to get the value of AM? 
Now, this is where the tangent theorem comes into handy. Now, according to the tangent theorem, the tangent drawn from an external point to the circles, in fact, I should say tangents drawn from an external point to the circle will always be equal. So, that's why I said AM would be equal to AN. So, these two are equal. Now, since I have realized that AM is equal to AN, and there is an external point C. From the external point, I've got a tangent at P and a tangent at N. If I were to take this CN to be a sum X, then PC will also be equal to sum X. But this entire length is going to be 7 units. It's not I am assigning it as 7 units. It's given to be as 7 units. So if this entire length is 7 units, and this is x units, if I want to get bp, then from 7 I subtract x. So this is going to be 7 minus x. Now b is an external point. From an external point I am drawing a tangent to m and I am drawing a tangent to p. So that would mean these two tangents will be one and the same. So that would mean bm will be also 7 negative x. But we have known am is equal to am. So what is am? Let me write that down. AM is 8 added with 7 negative x. What is AN? AN is 9 added with x. Right? So this is 15 negative x. Push this x to the other side. Bring this 9 to this side. So this is going to be 15 negative 9 is equal to x positive x. So that's going to be 2 times x. This is going to give me 6. Right? So let me place that calculation here. So, 6 is equal to 2x, therefore x is equal to 3, right? So, x is equal to 3 means what is am? 7, from 7 you take away 3, you get 4. So, am, from here, am is equal to what? 12 units. So, tan theta is equal to r over am, right? So, let me use that. Tan theta from the figure, right? From figure, tan theta is equal to r over am and I have got tan theta 1 over root 5 and I have got to get r and what is am? am has been found to be equal to 12. So this would mean r is equal to 12 over root 5. So that is the solution for this question. Right? Isn't it beautiful? Thank you everybody. Enjoy your day.